friends, I'm Dr. Iram S. Rao, Associate Professor of Food Technology at Bhaskaracharya College of Applied Sciences, University of Delhi. I've been teaching for more than 20 years in this particular university and today I have a very pleasant task of talking about what is food fortification. We've known about a lot of foods which deliver nutrients in the natural form. We also know that the market is flooded with foods which are processed. While they are being processed, you understand that some of the nutrients can obviously be lost because they are treated at high temperatures or they can be put into certain storage conditions. That is why there are some foods you must have read or even consume that they are fortified. Now does that ring a bell? Yes, we have been consuming fortified salt for many many years and that is where we talk about that why there is a need for fortifying the food, what the generic principles one must look into what are the types of fortification which is done and what is the regulatory status of fortification in our country. It has been estimated that out of every three people in the world, one person is suffering from either one or more micronutrient deficiencies. What are these micronutrients? We've learned about iron, iodine, B-complex vitamins. These are deficient in our diet. We may be belonging to an affluent class, but it is not necessary that our diet is delivering all of this. So a balanced diet means that it is not only balanced in the macronutrients, but it is also delivering all the micronutrients which are required by an individual. These requirements vary from time to time. That is why we have certain vulnerable section of the population which require certain micronutrients in certain statuses. For instance, you have growing up children you have adolescent girls, you have pregnant and lactating women who require a little more attention to the micronutrients because they are going to give birth to a baby which may then have deficiencies associated with lack of these micronutrients. Now what is fortification? Fortification is nothing but the addition of nutrients to the food to improve the quality of the diet. It can be done of an individual, community or a group. This includes the process of adding small quantities of nutrients to a food to improve the nutritional status of that particular population. Fortification of foods which includes multiple nutrients. It can be micronutrients like iron, iodine, vitamin A, B12, folic acid, etc. Fortification has had a very strong track record. It has been seen that across the world from the early 20th century, food has been fortified with vitamin A, D, B-complex vitamins, iodine, iron and we've got a very positive response in combating these deficiency diseases. So what about India then? The history of food fortification in India is relatively young. We've been fortifying vegetable oil or hydrogenated vegetable oil which is called as Vanaspati from 1953 mandatory with vitamin A and vitamin D. It was only in 1998 universal and mandatory iodization of salt began. It was in 2000 that wheat for flour fortification started by some of the state governments was taken up by some more 11 states but today in 2016 FSSI has taken the lead to draft guidelines for fortification of food that includes rice, wheat flour, milk, salt and edible oil. So what is the need to fortify food? We've understood that it is done to combat deficiency diseases. But what is the reason behind it? It is ignorance or unhealthy lifestyles which has led to these microdeficiency disorders. A lot of children are born with NCDs and that is why there is a need to fortify the food which has been given to the pregnant women. The objectives of fortification are dual. There are two methods. One, we either restore the nutrients in the food after processing it, which is called as restoration, and the other one is enrichment. So you can look at a staple food which lacks one or more nutrients and you can fortify them with that critical micronutrient which is consumed by the masses. So basically fortification is talking about restoration, like for instance when you process fruit juices, the vitamin C are lost because we've learned water soluble vitamins are the most sensitive and that is why it needs to be replenished with vitamin C. The principles of food fortification were laid down way back by FAO 
and these include that you can fortify foods which are commonly eaten by the masses they should be constantly consumed should not have any toxicity should not be destroyed or lost during storage they should be completely safe there should be no nutrient interaction and they should be accepted by the masses some of the fortified foods which you see in the market are salt wheat cooking oils condiments milk and some of the foods which are served through the icds or the midday meal program to small children under the age of 5 years the advantages of fortification are many food fortification does not require people to change their eating habits you can add the fortificant in the diet of an individual which he is used to consuming the effect of fortification is both fast and is also broad based fortification does not affect the organoleptic properties or the taste of the food it is also one of the safest ways of delivering micronutrients to the masses the requirements of the fortified food are that it should be cost effective it should be centrally processed it should be stable it should be consumed by most of the people and specifically those who are at the risk of of developing the deficiency disease for instance iodine deficiency disorders are very rampant in the plains of the country and that is why we need to fortify salt which is consumed in a particular amount by all there is nobody who eats extra amount of salt and that is why it's one of the safest way to deliver the nutrient it has to be acceptable to the masses it should not have any adverse effect in the absorption of any other nutrient it should be assimilated or absorbed in the body completely and it should not impart any undesirable characteristic such as it should not bring about color change flavor change or an odor to the food the fortification technology includes either using dry mix mixing of the powders and adding it to your staple flours like atta milk powder beverages which can be reconstituted or you can dissolve it in the water like you can add vitamin d and vitamin a to liquid milk it can be added to certain drinks it can be also added to juices you can either spray it like for instance once the food has been extruded like a breakfast cereal can be coated with the fortificant it can also be dissolved in the oil based medium so fat soluble vitamins specifically can be dissolved like vitamin d vitamin a and mixed in your butter margarine or any other spreads or oils the commonly fortified foods which you can see in the indian market are salt it has been for long fortified with iodine and very recently you must have noticed that double fortified salt has also entered the market which is it has in addition to iodine iron whole wheat flour and maida would also be soon fortified with iron folic acid calcium zinc b12 similarly rice vegetable oils have to be fortified with vitamin a and d milk and milk products have long been fortified with vitamin d a iron folic acid calcium omega 3 and 6 fatty acids icds supplementary foods have also been fortified with iron and folic acid and sugar is usually fortified with vitamin a let's look into what are the methods of fortification there are three types one is mass fortification in which the micronutrients are added to foods commonly consumed by the masses such as cereals condiments we've just looked into example of salt which is a condiment and which has been fortified universal fortification includes addition of the micronutrient to the given food and which is then consumed not only by the humans but also the animals iodization of salt is an excellent example of universal fortification targeted fortification means that only a specific age group like school children pregnant or lactating women or perhaps adolescent girls are targeted with a set micronutrient which is supposed to be at risk for the different types of foods which are fortified you have conventional fortifications you can also fortify foods at home and there is bio fortification so conventional fortification would be the staples which are already fortified and perhaps you get a bread out of that or a roti or perhaps you use the same milk to prepare your indian sweet meats kheers etc home fortification an excellent example would be vitamin d3 which is nowadays used by most of the individuals as sachets it is added to your curds or perhaps your milk just before you consume that 
That means it is at an individual scale. Biofortification is a novel technology of actually incorporating the micronutrient right at the inception of sowing the plant, which means we need agriculturalists and a biotechnologist to intervene to give you a genetically modified or perhaps a transgenic variety of the biofortified cereal. A lot of work is being done today on cereals which are being biofortified with particular nutrients. This is an emerging technology and it is based on GM plants. Biofortified rice is available. You have a lot of work which is happening on corn, sweet potato, but all of these right now are not available in the market because a lot of in-depth research and also clearances from the regulatory authority including those from the environment are required. So the regulatory status of India, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India has recently drafted a regulation on food fortification. The draft for wheat flour fortification is in line with global fortification recommendations for iron, vitamin B12 and folic acid. These regulations set the standards of food fortification and encourage the production, manufacture, distribution and sale and consumption of fortified foods. The FSSAI drafted guidelines for the fortification of food that includes rice, wheat flour, milk, salt and edible oil. They also provide for a specific role of FSSAI in the promotion for food fortification and making fortification mandatory. The strategic plan for implementation of the regulation includes monitoring, evaluation and research. It also includes intervention programs, advocacy and communication. Very important role has to be played for capacity building, partnering with the industry and coordinating it. Besides that, a lot of work needs to be instituted for policy, guidelines and legislation. So FSSI has instituted certain limits for fortifying the foods. For condiments such as salt, it has to be fortified with 30 parts per million in case of iodine on a dry weight basis and for iron it is between 850 to 1100 ppm. For edible oil, it's vitamin A which should be 25 international units per gram of oil and vitamin D which should be 4.5 international units per gram of oil. For milk per liter, the level of vitamin A should be 770 international unit and vitamin D is 550 international unit. For atta and rice, which are the staples, iron should be at 20 milligrams, folic acid at 1300 micrograms, vitamin B12 at 10 micrograms, besides Atta can additionally be fortified with nutrients like zinc, vitamin A, B1, B2, B6 and niacin. Similar thing applies even for rice. The initiatives which will be supported by FSSAI for fortification of food includes fortification of ICDS supplementary cooked food, fortification of food for the midday meal programs, fortification of factory produced ready-to-eat foods, fortification of wheat flour supplied through targeted public distribution system. What is the way forward then? There are a number of challenges which need to be addressed. So we must begin with creating community awareness about benefits of food fortification. Private sector, government and international agencies have to be brought together and make necessary investment in food fortification. Ensure increased availability of fortified foods to the masses, specifically to the vulnerable age group of the population. So let's quickly sum up what we've learned. Food fortification, what is it? It is the most effective way of delivering micronutrients to the vulnerable population which are at risk of developing deficiency diseases like anemia, iodine deficiency disorders, etc. What are the functions of fortificant? It can be easily replenished in the food which has been processed or perhaps you can look at a staple or a condiment and add that particular fortificant so that it can reach the masses. It needs to be cost effective. It should be acceptable by the masses. We can facilitate FSSCI in meeting the challenge 
by increasing community awareness and spreading the message of consuming more and more fortified foods for our own benefit. Thank you.